The single bee is creating an army of clones. The increasing eternal cloned armies of competing subspecies of honeybees causes hives of the African lowland honeybee to fail. Research has uncovered a distinct honeybee species that can make flawless replicas of itself and then use those replicas to infiltrate competitors' hives. When a female cape honeybee lays an egg, scientists observed that she does not reorder her DNA. This enables it to manufacture flawless clones of itself every time it propagates, therefore making it immortal. Over the last three decades, scientists have uncovered one honeybee in this subspecies that has created huge amounts of clones. In the journal Publications of the Royal Society B, researchers examining this strange occurrence released a report detailing their findings. The study's principal author, Benjamin Oldroyd, a professor of behavioral genetics at the University of Sydney, stated, It's fantastic, yet at the same time, it's tremendously disordered. During a process known as recombination, the DNA of the parents is often mixed up. So, despite having just one parent, the offspring's genetic makeup differs. The South African Cape bee, on the other hand, appears to make flawless duplicates of its DNA whenever it reproduces. The worker's capability to clone freely puts their colonies in an even more vulnerable situation, particularly once the queen disappears or dies and the existing social system crumbles making the honeybees a bit more of a concern for their colony and competing beehives. Workers will devote their efforts to greedy plans, like looking for ways to put their clones in power positions rather than devoting their energy towards getting the colony back on the right track. If you remove the queen rather than raising a new queen like all other bee species, these bees will only start breeding on their own, Aldroyd explained. There's also cells called queen cells, in which the queen lays the eggs enclosing potential queens. A worker can jump in from another colony, or for one of the existing workers in that colony to come and supplant that queen egg with one of their replica eggs, allowing them to be biologically reborn as a queen. Now the research teams have figured out how the workers pull off their strange cloning stunt, they are struggling to figure out just how queens turn on the recombination gene, and also how workers turn it off. They would also like to look at the African lowland hives that have been parasited by Cape bee workers to see what causes the beehive to disintegrate. Satellite images show near collision of an iceberg in Antarctica. Icebergs can reach colossal sizes. One such iceberg, thought to be the width and length of almost twice the size of Paris, barely managed to evade crashing into a tall ice shelf from which it separated in the first place, according to satellite images. Had the iceberg hit the ice shelf, it is fully believed that the collision would have been the catalyst for an even larger iceberg to be freed from the ice shelf and sent into the freezing Antarctic oceans. The fissure on the Brunt ice shelf appeared in November of 2020 and soon cut into the iceberg known as A74. Ever since it split from the Brunt, A74 has been floating close by for months on end due to the intensity of the ocean's flow. The Brunt ice shelf is already severely suffering from greater rifts and fissures. The potential for A74 to hit it only worsens its chances as the separation between the Brunt and A74 was the third worst ice shelf split in the past decade. The European Space Agency claimed that, in early August, strong easterly winds have spun the iceberg around the western tip of Brunt, brushing slightly against the ice shelf before continuing southwards. Had the drifting iceberg hit the unstable ice shelf with severe force, it may have triggered the release of a new 656 square mile sized iceberg. This new iceberg would challenge even the colossal A74 with its horrifically impressive height and width which, of course, spells out great trouble for our planet. A member of the ESA publicly stated, The nose-shaped piece of the ice shelf, which is even larger than A74, remains connected to the Brunt ice shelf, but barely. If the berg had collided more violently with this piece, it could have accelerated the fracture of the remaining ice bridge, causing it to break away. It does not seem as though the risk is going away anytime soon, and it is sadly believed that the huge chunk of ice is bound to break away at any moment, given but the slightest push will be enough for it to crumble. Brunt, A74 and the prospective new iceberg are being closely monitored by glaciologists everywhere for changes in the ice shelf. 
The British Antarctic Survey claimed that the Brunt Ice Shelf was unsafe back in 2017, but the situation has only worsened since then. The temperatures of the Antarctic have risen to a shocking 3 degrees Celsius in only the past 70 years. A truly terrifying thought to consider. Strange life has been found trapped inside these giant cave crystals. In 2013, within the vastness of Mexico's Nica mine, researchers uncovered subterranean crystals that contain mysterious ancient microbes that scientists speculate have been residing in the Mexican caves for far over 50,000 years. These strange microbes seem to have been in a sleep-like state for millennia and have inhabited tiny gaps in the crystal edifices. Researchers found a way to take the microbes into their labs and to awaken them after thousands of years of stagnant slumber. Penelope Boston, the director of the Astrobiology Institute of NASA, has stated about the finding. These organisms are so extraordinary. The Nika mine is an undeniably stunning place on Earth. However, it is also one of the most dangerous ones. In fact, the Nika mine is one of the planet's most inhospitable domains we know of, with temperatures ranging from 45 to 65 degrees Celsius and eternally high levels of humidity. Furthermore, the environment is incredibly acidic, with the caves plagued by terrible darkness. These microbes live 300 meters underneath the Earth, meaning they are unable to photosynthesize and instead use the biological process of chemosynthesis, where they use various natural minerals residing within crystals to feed. These wondrous microbes are unlike anything we have ever witnessed. Their bodies seemingly shut down during their several thousand year slumbers, but they have managed to survive countless disasters and catastrophes that raged on the surface of the earth, all the while never knowing they were happening, fully immersed in their docile state. Boston likewise stated, other people have made longer term claims for the antiquity of organisms that were still alive, but in this case, these organisms are all very extraordinary, they are not very closely related to anything in the known genetic databases. Scientists grew various cultures of the microbes in the labs which allowed them to gain insight into them. Boston claims, much to my surprise, we got things to grow. It was laborious, we lost some of them, that's just the game. They've got needs we just can't fulfill. Despite Boston and her team's supposed evidence, not everyone in the field is convinced. Some scientists argue that they could have attached the microbes to drills and made it look as though they came from inside the crystals, when in reality, these could be very mundane types of microbes. In other words, a small group of researchers believes it to be a hoax. Purification Lopez Garcia has officially stated her views regarding the finding. I think that the presence of microbes trapped within fluid inclusions in Nika crystals is in principle possible. But contamination during drilling with microorganisms attached to the surface of these crystals or living in tiny fractures constitutes a very serious risk. I am very skeptical about the veracity of this finding until I see the evidence. Alternatively, Lopez Garcia's views were challenged by Brent Christner, a microbiologist from Florida. Reviving microbes from samples of 10,000 to 50,000 years is not that outlandish based on previous reports of microbial resuscitations in geological materials hundreds of thousands to millions of years old. He argues, pointing out how Boston's team worked tirelessly to be as thorough as possible in order to avoid any form of contamination. Boston's equipment was sterile and clean. Her team wore appropriate protective clothing and the beings they found in the crystals are similar, though not the same, to other types of extremophile microbes found elsewhere on Earth. Their research is yet to be officially confirmed as true, but if nothing else, the existence of these tiny beings shows that life, against all odds, has its ways to prevail. But what are your thoughts on these amazing discoveries? Be sure to let us know in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.